While using LiveLink for SOLIDWORKS, linking parameters between the two programs lets you control design parameters from Comsol Multiphysics. This way, you can update the design based on the simulation results and explore the design space either manually or automatically using Comsol's parametric or optimization solvers. This video will show you how to set up parameter synchronization when working with part files in SOLIDWORKS. Note that if you are unfamiliar with LiveLink for SOLIDWORKS, you can learn about the basics of synchronization in a previous video. To get things started, let's open up a blank model in Comsol Multiphysics. We can add a 3D space component, and then a LiveLink for SOLIDWORKS node, and click Synchronize to bring in the geometry. Here our geometry shows up in Comsol Multiphysics. Looking at the parameters in CAD package tab, we can see that there's a table here, but it is empty for now. This is because we need to manually choose which parameters we want to be synchronized over into Comsol Multiphysics. A CAD design could contain hundreds of parameters, so having them all transferred over by default would not be a very good idea. Let's go into SOLIDWORKS and add these parameters to be synchronized over. In the Comsol Multiphysics tab in the SOLIDWORKS ribbon, we can click this Parameter Selection button to open up the Comsol Parameter Selection window. There are two tables here. One shows the available dimensions and variables for the selected features, and the second shows the parameters we want to add to our Comsol model. With this window open, we have a mirror of the design tree that has been added to this window. We can use this to find variables and dimensions that have been predefined, such as the width of the handle, which has been defined as W. We can add this to the parameters to add to Comsol model. We can also open up the wrench folder and go into the different sketches. Here in sketch four, we have two parameters, one for the length of the wrench and another for the width. Note that the width has a red sigma symbol next to it. This tells us that it is an equation-driven parameter. And to avoid breaking relations in the design by mistake, these driven parameters cannot be controlled by the LiveLink interface and are grayed out. Instead, we would need to find the variables driving it and link those to Comsol. The length dimension, on the other hand, is selectable. So we can click in the window and then add it to our selection. Finally, in sketch five, we have the head tilt angle, which we can actually just click on the dimension in the graphics window and then click add. And with that, we have our three parameters. We simply need to click the check mark to confirm the selections. And then we can go back into Comsol Multiphysics and click synchronize again to bring the parameters into Comsol Multiphysics. Here in the table, we have a column with green check marks to determine if we want certain parameters to be synchronized or not. And then there's a column for the CAD name, which is taken from the SOLIDWORKS file. And we also have a column for the COMSOL name, which is automatically generated from the SOLIDWORKS name and reformatted for use in COMSOL Multiphysics. We can keep the generated parameter names to easily recognize which design parameters we're working with or we can change them to whatever we want to make it easier to model in Comsol Multiphysics. Let's say length underscore wrench. Note that the font color changed to red, indicating an error that this is an unknown model parameter. When we import parameters into Comsol Multiphysics from the CAD package, they are added under the global definitions node in the parameters node. Notice that the name still matches the old COMSOL name that was originally imported in. We can change this as well to length underscore wrench. Once these two names match, the error goes away. There are a few different ways that we can now change the geometry with varying effects and consequences. So let's take a look at three of these. First, we can change the value of the parameter in this expression field to control the geometry from Comsol Multiphysics. Back in the Live Link node, let's click Synchronize again. Here, you can see that the length of the wrench grew. During a synchronization, the value of the parameter is sent to SOLIDWORKS, 
where the design changes. Here you can see the length is longer in SOLIDWORKS as well. And then SOLIDWORKS sends this new geometry back to COMSOL to be rebuilt. We can also change the geometry directly in SOLIDWORKS rather than in COMSOL Multiphysics. We can, for instance, change the value of a parameter that isn't linked at all to COMSOL. For example, let's take a look at the radius of a fillet. We can edit this feature. Let's change the fillet size to 1.5 millimeters. And then click the check mark. Now, when we go into COMSOL Multiphysics and click Synchronize again, the geometry will update accordingly. It's a subtle change, but you can see that the radius of the fillet has been enlarged here as well. Lastly, what if we change a parameter in SOLIDWORKS that is linked to COMSOL? For instance, in Sketch 5, this head tilt angle. We can edit this 15 degrees to be 17 degrees, and the geometry updates in SOLIDWORKS. Going back into COMSOL Multiphysics, the COMSOL value is still 15 degrees. If we were to click Synchronize right now, COMSOL would send this 15 degrees back to SOLIDWORKS, where it would overwrite our previous change. We must first click this Update Parameters from CAD button to change the COMSOL value to 17 degrees. Now, we can safely click Synchronize to update the geometry. Finally, since we've spent all this time selecting parameters, let's review how we can save our work so we don't have to select these parameters again when reopening our models. In the Parameter Selection window, all the way at the bottom, there's a checkbox to save the list in the SOLIDWORKS file. As long as you click this check mark and click OK, anytime you save and reopen this file and then synchronize with the new COMSOL model, the parameters will update accordingly. A saved COMSOL model would also synchronize the linked parameters after reopening, even if not saved in SOLIDWORKS. Lastly, you can save the parameters from COMSOL Multiphysics as text files to load back into a new file later on. You should now feel comfortable linking SOLIDWORKS parameters with COMSOL Multiphysics, with an understanding of how changes in one program affect the other. And don't forget to save your parameter selections so you don't have to redo them over and over again.